The Islamic Republic of Pakistan is strategically situated between South Asia, Central Asia and the Middle East. With a 650-mile coastline along the Arabian Sea and the Gulf of Oman in the south, the country is bordered by Afghanistan and Iran in the west, India in the east and China in the far northeast. The Torgar, or Black Mountain Range, is situated in northeastern Balochistan, near the border of Afghanistan. Approximately 55 miles long and 15 miles wide, the mountain range is formed of rugged sandstone. Its northern boundary is the Kunda River Valley, whilst the Kaisor Valley forms its southern boundary. The region is characterized by steppe vegetation and the major tree species include wild pistachio, juniper and wild ash. The area is also rich in herbs and shrubs. But it is its abundant and diverse wildlife that this region has long been famous for. Its mountains once contained large populations of straight-horned or Suleiman markhor, Afghan uriel, snow leopard and, in some places, black bear. Unfortunately, since the late 1970s, unrest in Afghanistan has initiated a steady flow of refugees, weapons and ammunition into the region. With modern weapons, mostly AK-47s, and plentiful supply of ammunition, seasonal migrants and local residents decimated the wildlife. By the early 1980s, the Suleiman Markor and Afghan Uriel populations were on the brink. The snow leopard became extinct across the sub-region. The Torgar Mountains are situated within the provincially administered tribal area and consequently local tribal leaders exercise considerable power. One of the most charismatic leaders from the region during this time of carnage was the late Nawab Taimur Shah Jogazi. He himself was a hunter and realized that if something were not done, the Suleiman Markor and Afghan Uriel would disappear. He decided to impose a total hunting ban, which he was able to enforce through both his tribal authority as well as his official status within the government. With the help of Sadar Nasir Tareen, the Torgar Conservation Project, TCP, was born. I am not a conservationist uh, in terms of in some scientific uh, background as a biologist or a zoologist or anything of that sort. I'm basically a filmmaker. While doing a film, I realized that uh, Straton Marhor or Suleiman Marhor as we call it, was almost gone. So with this idea, I approached the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. There was a gentleman in charge at that time, Mr. Dave Ferguson, and asked him if he could help the government of Balochistan and Pakistan with conserving this species that was almost gone. So a team was sent way back in 1984 and uh, it was headed by uh, the late Professor Bart Ogara of Montana University. After his discussion and that of his team with the uh, bureaucrats and the other officials, they reached a conclusion that uh, the only way to save the animal was through some private efforts. As a result, we talked with the community of Torgar and established the project. The help extended to us was through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. They sent the biologist who did the surveys. They gave us the idea of how to use, how to start this sustainable use conservation project. And we started this uh, in November of 1985. At that time, the animal population, the Marhor was less than 100, of that of Oreal was probably slightly more. But the Population wasn't enough for a serious trophy hunting program. The main threat to the uh, animals in Torgar was from the community because the area is outside 
the government control per se. And so the only thing we could do was to talk to the community as the idea was as to what will happen if once we had the population and we had a hunting program and the money will come to the community. Otherwise, it's no more than a few kilos of meat for them. And that was also on the vanishing point. So the community agreed and we started conserving the animals. The Torgar Conservation Programme, TCP, and the Suleiman Marko population of the Torgar Mountains have continued to prosper with the help of some of the world's leading wildlife conservation organizations, such as WWF Pakistan, the IUCN's Sustainable Use Specialist Group, IUCN Pakistan, the United Nations Development Program, and Conservation Force. In short, it is an extremely successful program by which local tribespeople participate in the conservation and re-establishment of Suleiman Marko and Afghan Uriel. A small number of hunting permits are sold to international hunters and the profits from these sales fund the TCP's conservation and community projects. These projects include paying the salaries of local game guards, the construction of dams, the establishment of nurseries and orchards, the sinking of wells and installation of hand pumps, construction and maintenance of irrigation canals, the building of retaining walls, the cleaning out of springs to increase the volumes of water, the construction and maintenance of roads, and the ongoing provision of medical supplies for both the people and their livestock. In return, the local tribes people have agreed not to hunt any of the wildlife species of the region. My name is Amir Khusro and I belong to a Jogezai family, which is a subcaste of uh, Sanzar Khir Kakar, who lives in this uh, uh, area of uh, northern Balochistan. We have uh, 500 families around this uh, part of the Thorgar. They are semi-nomadics, they change their places with the time of uh, season, they are seasonal migrants. Uh, their source of income is uh, to sell in the market for their livelihood. My grandfather, Nawab Temursha Jogizai, who launched this idea of uh, conservation Torgar in 1984. It is a successful program for, to conserve the animal as well as to make um, uh, the money for the local people. This is why important because the trophy hunting fees is essential to run the program. Some money goes to the program to manage and the rest of the money goes to the local community. These people were initially very opposed to this program and uh, now they are well satisfied because they know uh, this program that they are very helpful for them. So this is a blessing or in disguise that the wild sheep uh, is earning a money for them. In 1985, fewer than 100 Suleiman Marko were thought to be living in the Torgar Mountains region. Since the inception of the TCP, the numbers have steadily increased. In 1994, a study revealed that the number of Marko had climbed to almost 700. Surveys in 1997 and 1999 showed populations of 1,298 and 1,694 respectively. By 2004, the Zoological Survey of Pakistan revealed that the Marko population had grown to approximately 2,500. At the time of the most recent survey, November 2008, the number had burgeoned to over 3,100. Most of our, nearly 99% of our surveys are conducted by the American biologists. And we still consider the help from the American biologists to be of quite importance for us. The logic of the program's success is rather simple. The animals sought by hunters are exclusively older males with the largest horns. Hunting those animals means leaving the females and younger males at peace, therefore not interfering in the reproduction cycles. The growth rate is thus undisturbed. Because of the TCP's success, Tribal groups from at least seven other mountain ranges in Balochistan have expressed an interest in establishing similar programs. Over the years, it was very difficult. 
we went through problems with the government, the legal status of this uh, project and also the legal status of permits that were issued by the tribal authorities at that time. Over this quarter of a century, we have legalized all that. The CITES has granted us special permits for the Markor hunts and uh, our income is pretty satisfactory. We have not increased the numbers of animals because we would like to keep track of the money that comes into the project as to not to disturb the uh, the whatever social ways of the mountains are. The main idea of these uh, funds are to make a dent in their poverty, their health programs, pay and also some development. Development that does not uh, hurt the habitat and uh, disrupt the animal movement from one part to the other. Inshallah we will have one day that uh, the whole world will know about the Thorgar conservation program as well as this community. These are the people who make it this program successful and these are the achievements, these are the stories which we can uh, proudly to tell every uh, citizen of the world that look, uh, come to Thorgar, look the endeavors we have taken. Now we are having many, many animals everywhere, every time you can watch, you can climb to the mountain, you can uh, watch many animals in, in many directions. These were the achievements of this society. We are proud of Thorgar, we are committed uh, to conserve this area. We are committed to, in the future, we will never let it down in the, at every cost. We are, inshallah, will be having a good future here.